fly. The summer in Marrow's End was always a time of relentless heat and dry winds, but this season, the air was heavier and the sky a constant overcast gray. It wasn't just the unyielding heat that pressed down on the town. It was the flies. They arrived subtly at first, their droning hums a mere backdrop to the daily bustle of the townsfolk. Yet, as days slipped into weeks, their presence burgeoned into an inescapable cacophony. They swarmed over refuse with fervor, their bodies glistening like dark, moving gems in the sunlight. At first, the people of Marrow's End laughed it off, swatting away the occasional fly that ventured too close to their meals or their children. But the insects seemed to take the dismissal as a challenge. They multiplied, their numbers an undulating carpet, on the once pristine Main Street, flies clustered in thick clouds around the town, enshrouding it in a buzzing veil that dimmed the daylight. The change in the town was palpable. The diner, once the hub of laughter and clinking dishes, now lay abandoned, its sticky floors testament to a hasty exodus. The school closed its doors, the playground silent, but for the zipping of flies against the chain-link fences. Even the steadfast churchgoers hesitated before entering the chapel, fearful of what might be breeding within its sacrosanct walls. It was old Martha, the town's unofficial historian, who recalled the legend of the flies. One evening, under the flicker of candlelight, she shared the tale with a gathering of the town's most worried. She spoke of a time, centuries past, when the flies had come before, heralding a great misfortune. They were, she claimed, the souls of the forgotten, returned to remind the living of debts unpaid and promises broken. The younger residents scoffed at the story, but the elders exchanged uneasy glances. The town did have its secrets, like the old mill that stood crumbling on the outskirts, where an unfathomable tragedy had once struck, or the whispers of wrongs done in the name of progress and greed. As the infestation worsened, the people of Marrow's End found themselves trapped. Roads out of town became impassable, the air choked with flies. Technology failed, phones and radios were silent leaving only the constant buzz to fill the void. Then came the night when the flies, in their uncountable masses, descended upon the old mill. The townsfolk watched from behind sealed windows as the swarm pulsed and writhed around the decrepit structure. It was then that the mill began to change. The wood groaned and shifted, and the walls seemed to breathe. A dim light glowed from within, growing brighter with each passing moment. In the dead of night, a piercing shriek shattered the drone of the flies and the mill erupted in flames. The inferno raged, an angry beacon in the dark, yet the flies remained, circling the fire in a dizzying spiral. In the morning, the mill was nothing but smoldering ash but the flies had vanished. The sky was clear for the first time in months, and the townspeople emerged from their homes like survivors of a long siege. They gathered around the remains of the mill, where in the light of dawn, they found something that hadn't been there the night before. A monument stood in the ash, simple and unadorned with a plaque that bore the names of those lost in the tragedy of the mill, their memories finally honored. The flies never returned to Marrow's End, but the memory of that summer lingered. The monument became a place of pilgrimage, a site to honor not just those lost in the mill, but all forgotten souls. And though the residents never spoke of it, each person knew that their debts had been paid in full by the flies, the carriers of remembrance, ensuring the past would not be buried again.